Hello, I'm Annette Dufty and I'm the Artistic Director for the Teleco Community Playhouse and today we're going to talk about the Cemetery Club and I have been graced with the presence of three people who are involved with the show who are going to talk to us a little bit about it. Uh, Jill, and how, what was your full name that you go uh, by professionally? Jill Stapleton Bergeron. Stapleton Bergeron, so sorry. It's okay. Uh, Freddie Ruth Pope and Joel Bonin, and uh, we are going to talk to them, and they're going to talk to us about the show and some of the uh, thoughts behind it. So uh, let's jump right in. Jill, I'm so excited you're directing for us. Um, Thank you. Can you give us um, a brief synopsis of the play? Sure. Um, I think when you hear the, the title Cemetery Club, you're like, oh my gosh, that must <laughs> be a really sad so you know play but uh, it's interesting because it's the total opposite it is so much fun um, very the lines are hilarious I've, like you said I've done the play a couple of times and I still laugh because it's so funny but it's basically these three widows who have been friends for over 20 years and they were friends when they their husbands were alive and so the six of them would go on vacation together and that sort of thing and all their husbands have now passed, and so they're all widows, and they go once a month to visit their husband's graves, and that's why it's called the Cemetery Club, because it's a group of women who have tea, and then they go to the cemetery. <laughs> um, and there's one character who is tired of going. She doesn't want to go visit her dead husband anymore and thinks that she should move on, absolutely. And then there's one that's total opposite. I'll never move on. I don't, you know, I have no interest in getting married. I'm going to go every month and see Abe. And then we have Ida, who's kind of in the center, and she's kind of like, I, you know, I still want to honor my husband, but I think I'm at a point where I'm ready to move on, which <laughs> is really kind of what the play is about, is, is how do we deal with grief and, um, you know, what, is it okay to go on after you've lost a loved one? And so the play really examines that with these three different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And um, then we have Sam, who is the love interest of Ida in the play. And he's in a similar position. He lost his wife a few years ago. And so he goes to the cemetery too. And um, he's kind of interested in Ida in the play. And he's also, you know, grappling with, you know, should I start dating or not? Mm -hmm. So basically the play is, is really about these, these four people who are trying to come to grips with the loss of their longtime partner and deciding whether they should go on and, and move on to a different chapter uh, in their lives with still honoring their, you know, their spouses. Mm -hmm. That's basically what well, it's about. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of diverse characters, which mm -hmm. is kind of nice. Uh, Freddie, mm -hmm. can you tell us a bit about your character? Sure. I'm I'm Ida, so I'm the character that Jill described, who's who's uh, sort of between the the extremes of um, um, Lucille, who is more than ready to move on as often as possible, <laughs> and. Um, and Doris, who w will never move on, is, mm -hmm. is totally devoted to her deceased husband and, and his memory. So Ida, um, Ida's recognizing that um, really life is for the living and, and feeling like it's time to move on. And, um, you know, I think trying to, trying to feel her way, trying to find her way to moving on. And, and, um, and she and Sam know each other in a friendly way, mm -hmm. and so I think there's this little um, attraction there. So, um, so she's very sweet. I think she's also a little bit of a buffer mm -hmm. <laughs> between mm -hmm. Lucille and Doris, <laughs> yes, because they mm -hmm. they because they have such opposing views on this seminal topic. Um, you know, they tend to get into it a little bit, and and Ida sort of the sort of tries to be the the peacekeeper between the two of them. I see. Well, uh, Joel, uh, can you tell me a bit about your character? Um, Sam the Butcher uh, more or less stumbles on these three as they're visiting uh, Doris's husband's grave mm -hmm. and realizes that he's been acquainted with Ida th through the, his butcher shop. He's a, oh. a butcher and also in the same boat as the three of them because he has lost his spouse. 
and he believes that it's time to move on, but um, I get the feeling that he's not real good at it. <laughs> he, he's an empathetic fellow. He, ha he does have feelings for what the three women are going through and the way they go through it, but he gets something set up in his mind to act a certain way, and it doesn't always work out to be the smoothest sort of way. So he's definitely out of practice, but he's got a very good heart, and the more I read the play, the, the part, uh, the more I identified with him not being the uh, smoothest person in the world. <laughs> so um, he has decided to move on, and he is uh, trying to actually connect with Ida, but there's a roadblock or two in the <laughs> way. But um, I think we, we come to a, a pretty good conclusion, and uh, the relationship is one that says, yes, it's, it's okay to move on. Freddie, do you feel like you relate to your character, Ida? Yeah, I think, uh, I think in several ways. I, I, was, married <clears throat> I was married for a, a long time, um, divorced after many years, and then uh, waited quite a while, and I recently remarried within the last two years. Congratulations. And thank mm -hmm. you. And so the idea of second chances Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can certainly relate to, and then, um, and then I also think about when I when I first um, saw this play, uh, and then reading it, uh, thinking about how hard it is for uh, when when couples have been together for a mm -hmm. long time, how hard it is to lose that mm -hmm. partner. And I think about my parents were married, uh, had a very strong marriage, and they were married for fifty seven years when my oh. mother died. And, um, and how much my dad struggled, mm -hmm. you know, with knowing mm -hmm. how, how, to, how to keep going on after, after she was gone. So, um, so yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot to relate to. And I think most everybody can relate to the idea of, of second chances. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jill, mm -hmm. so you mentioned that you've directed this a couple of times before, and I'm wondering, um, have you directed it differently this time, and, and, and how? Uh, how have you done that? That's a good question. Um, yes, I have a theater group of my own it's called Free Spirit Theater, and we had the Cemetery Club all ready to go a week from opening in March of 2020. And oh. so if you oh. remember March of 2020, <laughs> that's when the world shut down. So we shut down, and we didn't get to do the play until um, a year and a half later. And even when I did that, I redid a lot of it because uh, mm -hmm. I had a couple of new cast members and because sure. people couldn't come back and do it or whatever. Um, the biggest difference, I think, from that time and this time, besides the cast, which is an obvious difference, uh, is that when I did it the first time, we set it in modern day. And um, now we're doing it, period, which is 1990, mm -hmm. which sounds like, for me, five years ago. but. <laughs> It is like 30 something years ago. So, uh, so we're doing period, you know, so we're ha trying to have fun with shoulder pads and big earrings and oh, nice. big hair, you know, and uh, so that has been fun for me. I don't know about the cast, but I've enjoyed sort of exploring that period a little bit and going back to that, you know. Um, and so that's been fun. And it was, and, you know, the thing about it though, is you could set this play right now, you could set it in 1930. And you could still do that play because I think the the honesty with the characters is uh, so valid uh, in what they're going through. But mm -hmm. then also, I think the lines would be funny in 1945 and 19, 2025. You know, I think you, and of course it's done all the time, especially by community theaters. And uh, I think that's why it's it's a great fun play, but it has a lot of heart. There's a little bit of sadness at the end, um, but you know we do like Freddie said, um, come to a, an end where we we understand that it is okay to move on and honor what's gone before, but it's okay to to continue. All right. Well, this is a first time you've directed at TCP, yeah. even though you've directed so very many other plays. So, uh, have you enjoyed that? Uh, experience have there been benefits oh absolutely that you've enjoyed? I've had so much fun oh, just getting wonderful. to know everybody but 
I mean, man, this group is so on top of it. You know, I mean, I was, we were having production meetings back in March, and <laughs> normally you would have a production when we open the end of September. So normally your first production meeting would be maybe 1st of August. Sure. So uh, everybody's really on top of everything. The volunteers that I have worked with are, are just so wonderful and they're so dedicated. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the Susan who's doing the set and she's been working her butt off on this, <laughs> <laughs> if I can say that, um, on getting this exactly the way, you know, we want it. And Rosie's doing props and uh, Hugh is stage managing and I don't want to leave anybody out, but there's a bunch of people right. and they're all doing really great work. And I've just really had a, had a blast. Well, I am so glad uh, to hear that. Joel has done many shows here mm -hmm. at TCP. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, before we run out of time, what do you, is the takeaway? What do you want the audience to take away from this after they watch the performance? Uh, I've been thinking that no matter what you've been through, no matter what path your life has taken, um, there's always tomorrow to look forward to. And the concept of second chances and being able to start over is uh, not only a very good part of this show, but I think it's uh, also kind of an American thing. Mm -hmm. We have a second chance. We get to make a mistake and fall down and do something over again and do better at it. Um, not necessarily that your relationship with your first spouse is going to be put in the back burner, but life goes on. Right. Um, so uh, it's an optimistic sh story, I believe, in the end, that you can find love, you can find companionship, uh, no matter what you've been through. Well, from what I know of the show, I know that a lot of wisdom comes out of the mm -hmm. laughs and the uh, tender moments. And I want to thank all three of you for being here so very much. I appreciate it telling us about it. I'm excited to see it. Um, I want to thank Teleco Village Network. They make this possible. We really, really appreciate them for allowing us to come here and talk about our favorite things to do, some <laughs> of our favorite things to do. Please, if you should um, have any desire to come uh, be a part of our productions, we ask that you please, please, please do that. Come play with us. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. I appreciate all three of you, and I can't mm -hmm. wait to see you on stage. Thank and you so you much. And you in front of stage. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye.